Everybody, I just thought I would say hello. I wanted to bring at the start of the video. I wanted to bring Train out. I know I've had a lot of people that said, "How come Train hasn't been in your videos lately?" Well, I don't know. <laughs> He's just been sleeping, I guess. I don't know. So I thought I'd catch up and we do another video. But he's normally an inside cat, and here we are outside. So he's kind of like, "What am I doing out here?" He's sort of wondering, aren't ya? Yeah. You hear all the birds, huh? Yeah, we've had, this is like prime bird season for us in Minnesota. We have all these birds that are migrating through. This morning I counted eight Orioles at our feeder this morning. So it was just a gorgeous um, time of year here. So you can see our trees aren't in full bloom yet. They're just like starting to bloom. I'm going to go put him back inside because he's wanting to get down and explore. Hang on a second. So what else have I been doing? Um, my neighbor and I had a garage sale last weekend. Um, the weekend before, I had a quilt retreat, which is why I couldn't go to the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat this spring. Um, my mom and I attend a quilting retreat every spring and every fall and it was our turn to organize that quilt retreat. And that was the same weekend. We had that set up before Michelle announced the dates for the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat. So unfortunately I wasn't able to go, but on Thursday, a lot of the people were getting in town, into town for that, for the, the retreat. So I met Jennifer and Tara and Tara's friend Karen for lunch and Stitchville on Thursday. And then we went back to the resort center and they checked in and then we um, went up to the stitching area or the stitching room wasn't open yet, but you could stitch in like the public areas of the hotel. So we went up to, I think we we're on the second floor or the third floor. We were on the third floor and we um, pulled up some chairs that were just kind of in a hallway and the four of us sat there and stitched and we were meeting people as they were walking by and and uh, yeah, it was it was neat. And I did not get to see Michelle. Um, I had hoped to, but she was busy um, at her farm and everything showing um, Priscilla and Chelsea and Cash the goats and we also missed Lisa and uh, Lori from Kindred Stitcher and Textilist, and um, yeah, it would have been nice to see them too. But I did get to see some of my old friends, my friend Neela, um, that I've been going to retreats with since the 90s. Hi, Neela. Um, and a bunch of other people too that, that uh, I had met from the, la the last retreat. But anyway, um, it was really fun to see them, and at least I got to spend a little time stitching with them. And and I'll just jump right into my stitching then, because that's why you're all here. You just want to see progress and stuff. So this is what I worked on with them. Um, this is a little, um, I've shown this before. This is called Christmas Cabin. And this is from Chessie and Me, Linda from Chessie and Me. And this is how far I am on it. So I'm just about finished. I just have this little reindeer in the corner to go. Just this little reindeer in the box. So I'm almost there. I'm getting there. So um, this has really been a fun stitch. It's uh, It goes quick and the colors are fun. And um, yeah, I just, it's really fun. And there's some specialty stitches, like there's some statin stitches in the trees. And I don't know if you can see the door. There's some eyelet stitches. So yeah, it's been a, a fun little, little stitch. I've enjoyed that one. Um, as soon as I, so this is what I call my, my car project. If I'm going anywhere, I keep it in this thing that my mom made me. And by the way, um, my mom um, made this for me years and years ago, but the pattern, you can still find it. It's still available. This is like a little pocket if you want to put your scissors in there or what, whatever. Um, the, this is from Indigo Junction 
and it's called, oh gosh, I'll put the name of it in the notes below if you're interested. It's an Indigo Junction. It's like Kim's, Kim's um, Needlework Organizer, I think is what it's called. And uh, you can still find the pattern on eBay used and on Etsy, I believe. Um, when this one is finished, I'm going to move on to this one, which Nicole of Nicole's Needlework, she just stitched this for Mania. And I saw her, she had finished it up. I saw it on her Instagram. And this was a little kit I picked up at Stitchville. It comes with absolutely everything you need, including the buttons, the felt heart, the fabric for finishing, all the floss, the linen. Um, it comes with everything. So, and then I just made up this little card. I, I always do that when I, um, I start a, a kit like this, you know, when you have to sort the floss. I always, I always do that. So these are, I, I mark the little symbols and then I write the color if it's available. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna work on next. That's gonna be my next car project, I call it. So that's that. Um, when I was at Stitchville, I picked up a little bit of haul. Um, I picked this one up from Stacy Nash. And this is an older one, but it's Anne Sampler Pin Keep. And my favorite thing about it is this little doll that Anne is holding. That is so cute. I don't know what it is about that doll. Um, and the way I wanna stitch this, these are about the same size. So I wanna stitch it side by side. So it'll be long and rectangular. So I'll do the alphabet and the doll and join them this way. So so that's my, my goal, that's my haul. So, so cute, it's really cute. I can't wait to stitch that one. Um, the other cross stitch thing I've been working on is I've been plugging away on my anniversaries of the heart. And I know I had a goal of finishing this before my 51st birthday. I don't know if it's gonna happen, you guys. I um, was hoping to do like one one a month and like one of, one of these a month because there's, I think there's 12 or 15. How many are there? 12, I think. Nope, 15. There's, it's like the equivalent of 15 of these. So they're five, five, and five. It's a great big sampler. So this is, what's taking me so long and what's so hard about it is um, the fact that you have to personalize it. So I'm doing this as kind of a memory of my family and those who are close to me. And um, kind of just a chronology or a family tree of, of my life and those important to me. So this was the one I'm working on and this one has, be this is my maternal cousin's block. Does that make sense? So I've got the, and, and I did, I'm not gonna take it out of the Q snap, but this is as maternal cousins and I've, I started, um, I got these charted. These are all of my cousin's names. So the girls are gonna be in pink and you can see I've got one of the boys charted. Um, we're heavy on girls on my mom in, in, in the maternal cousins. So, um, so yeah, the first, they're all charted right here and I've got five done and four more to go. I'm just starting the fourth one here. So, so that's how far I am. I mean, I've got a decent amount done, but as you can see, I mean, it's not, it's similar to this one, but it's not the same so you know I had to sit and rechart it and that takes time and I think that's what's slowing me down so much on this project is actually sitting down and charting it now one thing that I did just get though is um, an Apple pencil for my iPad and I have the stitch sketch program it's, it's an app and for my purposes like recharting stuff like this it works fine if I was a designer, I would want something more complicated. I know I used to be a designer, but I, if I were still a designer, I would want something more complicated and a little more, um, the ability to do a little bit more. But for my purposes, the Stitch Sketch program works out just fine. Um, I don't have an example sitting here of what it what it looks like, but um, the, the graphs look like when they're done. But um, it does a good job, it really does. And the Apple Pencil makes it an absolute dream. 
um, because you can actually rest your hand on the screen and it, it doesn't like go wonky, you know, because iPads are a touch screen, of course. So if you put your hand on there, it wants to react to it and do something. Well, when you put your hand on there with the Apple Pencil, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know why. It's technology. I'm too dumb to understand it. But um, And then you just, you know, like tap or you can write or whatever. So the Apple Pencil makes graphing on the iPad a dream. So if you're if if you're wondering about that, I highly recommend it. I think it's it's great. Let's do the giveaway. So I have these two little things and what they really are supposed to be are candle holders. Um, as I said, I've been going through um, a bunch of stuff and getting rid of things and these were my grandmother's candle holders candlesticks and they're just a very pretty glass it's some kind of a molded glass so you can tell these were done by hand because these are slightly different one is more concaved and than the other one um anyway i thought that these would make when you you know this this way it's a candle holder but this way i thought that they would make such a pretty base for like a um pin cushion or something um, Blackbird Designs or Heartstring Samplery or I mean just you can name a ton anything that would like is round and circular you could put like this little pin cushion tuffet right on here and I think that would just be so pretty so I have two of these and if anyone is interested in winning one of these let me know what do I want to know what is your, since we're, you were hearing all the birds, what is your favorite bird? Um, do you have a favorite bird? Maybe you don't. I don't know. I, what is your favorite bird and why? Why do you like that particular bird? Does it, you know, I mean, it could be a parakeet. It could be a swan. It could be a bald eagle, whatever. You, you tell me what your favorite bird is and why. So, um, so, and then you could win one of these. So, all right, um, the other thing that I've been doing that is somewhat stitching related is, so there's a lot of you that don't sew, but you like project bags. Well, I stumbled on a tutorial for a no sew project bag and I made one and it turned out kind of cool. Um, you make it with duct tape. So this is the brand of duct tape that I bought and this is the pattern that I picked. So it's just regular duct tape. And I got this at my um, local Joann's. My, let me, sorry, something's blowing away here in the wind. Okay. Um, I tried to pick one that had the design that was fairly centered. And you can see that this isn't perfectly centered, but um, the way it goes on, it, it, looks okay. So I'll show you what I did. You just basically take, so I've got these hefty jumbo size. This is the two and a half gallon size and there's 12 of them in this package and it's just got the slidey seal. And this is what I did. I covered, so I just started up here at the top and I took a strip of duct tape and I went beyond. So, I, you know, my, my pieces of tape were about this far we're about this far beyond the bag, okay? At different, you know, they were kind of different lengths. So you don't have to be exact because at the end you trim this, okay? So, so I did, I did it in two different ways. So you can see here, see this flower was kind of my central motif. And I, I put a strip on and then I staggered it. So I didn't line it up exactly under the other flower. I staggered it over just a little bit. Can you see that? And then I added another strip. And then here's my next one. And I just kind of staggered it. So I just sort of put it in between like where these were. And I, it was it was just kind of fun. So that's what I did. Now the other side, I switched it up a little bit. Let's see if you can tell the difference. So on this side, I did line these up. So it makes more of a grid. So my, my flowers were right below one another on this one. So you can see like the pluses are right above and below one another. And on this side, they're staggered. I don't know which one I like better. They both look nice. And you might not even notice immediately when you look at it. You're like, oh, that's 
I don't know which one I like better. So they're both really cool. But yeah, so this is a two and a half gallon bag. And, and if there was one tip I could give, I would say make sure that you um, overlap just a little bit. If I turn it this way, you can really see where they overlap. But when you're just looking at it straight on, if you're not in the sun like this, you don't like see it at all from this angle. From this angle, you see it a little bit because they overlap just a little bit. But you kind of have to, because if you don't, you get, like if you see a definite line then. But So anyway, once you once I got down to the bottom, I just, I have a, um, a rotary cutter and I have a, um, like a cutting mat. And I just lined my, I just laid it flat. And I, I have something in here right now, which is why it's not laying flat, um, a quilting project. Um, I just put my ruler on here and I took my rotary cutter and I just wah, wah, wah. and that's that so these these overlap they, the edges go just a tish beyond the bag so it's the tape backs up to one another so it like and then it sticks to to each other on each side so I just pinched it really really good and then I like I said I used my ruler and my rotary cutter and it's pretty slick so yeah, at one, one roll, I've got just a little bit left on the roll, hardly anything. So one roll did this. And like I said, when you, if you go in and you try this, try to pick a pattern that's, that you know you'll be able to line up okay. And you, as you can see, this isn't exactly centered, but it was close. So yeah, there's my no sew project bag tip for you guys. Pretty slick. So. Um, what is the last thing? Okay, the other thing that is stitching related, since I didn't have much stitchery this time, I thought I would bring out um, a sampler that I made in 1997. This antique frame I found up at our cabin um, up in northern Minnesota. There was something hanging in it, I don't even remember what it was, um, but it, it, I took it out and then I stitched this sampler, which is from Eileen Bennett. Um, she was a designer from way, well, I don't know, probably the 80s, 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And I think she's from Michigan, Eileen Bennett. And I wish I could remember what the name of this sampler is, but it's like, I think it's called A Husband's Lament. And the reason it's called that is because of the verse, and I'll read it here. It says, O oh, heaven preserve me from a wife with fancy work run wild and hands which never do aught else for husband or for child. Our clothes are rent, our bills unpaid, our house is in disorder, and all because my lady wife has taken to embroider. So I, I loved it. And then here it says, hope on, hope ever. And you can see the date and my initials and everything. And it's got a few little specialty stitches in these boxes here. But I I love this sampler, and it's as if this frame was made for it. And um, and when I first had it done, this was not at all the style. Like these samplery things and these ornate, gaudy frames like this from years ago. Um, when I did this, this was you know when people were matting you know their needlework and and it was mauve and country blue and, and everything. And um, yeah, it, anyway, there's another Oriole. Can you hear them? They're noisy, They, but they have like such a nice clear trill to their voice. They're just like, it's so clear. Like, it's really cool. I love that sound. Like immediately you can just discern it from the other birds. Isn't that pretty? No, he's not going to do it, but anyway, there we go. I, I call him out and he does it. So anyway, sing some more, Oreo. All right. The last, th last thing I want to show is um, the sewing stuff that I've been working on. So if you follow Misty Purcell, you probably saw um, Misty and I have um, a real interesting relationship because we both have such similar tastes in so much. Um, 
like our the fat because she's also a quilter so we really like the same fabrics we like the same cross stitch patterns um, chances are if if she starts something I will be like oh my gosh I almost bought that um, anyway so she and I are kind of kindred spirits that way we we kind of get each other's style so um, I found this pattern for this really cool box and um, it's kind of it's called a zip box zip tray pouch so it starts off looking like this so this is my version so there's the ends and it's got this separating zipper on it and a separating zipper is in like a jacket so you just unzip it and then it comes apart and you unfold it and it's a tray so it's nice for quilting supplies so that's what I mainly do with it so in here I throw like my quilting pencils I throw in um, you know skinny rulers my cheater glasses um, fabric marking pencils things like that any a chapstick I'll throw in here I throw it all in and then um, when you get to your retreat or your wherever you were sewing that day you open it up and there's all your tools you can just sift through and find them and when it's time to go home you just fold it right up and you just zip it up just like a jacket so the one thing I am going to do and I'm actually I think I'll I'll make a handle for Misty too but I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little handle out of this fabric, the, the binding fabric, and I'm gonna sew it right here. Just because it's it'd be easier to just pick up and carry around that way, you know, like a little tiny lunch box. Because when there's stuff in it, it's just kind of a weird way to pick it up. So I'm gonna sew a little handle right here, I think. And then um, I, I'll send a handle to Misty too, and she can, she can sew one on. Um, the other, if you are a seamstress, I found the neatest little sewing machine strip light. It's LED and you mount it, you know how you've got your sewing machine and your knobs are over here and then it's got the harp and then it comes down and this is where the needle goes down, okay? Um, you mount it, it's like a strip, LED strip, and you mount it right on the harp of your sewing machine and it, you just touch it on. It is so phenomenal and so fantastic, and it lights up your area. It's life-changing. I have um, a Juki sewing machine, which that's another similarity that Misty and I have. We both have the very same sewing machine. <laughs> so it, it's actually the same kind that Vana has as well. It's a, a Juki, and they are workhorses. If you want a great sewing machine, um, the Juki, I, mine is, uh, I think, the new, newest version of the one I have. I have an older version of it. I found it at a yard sale for $150. And um, my it's a TL2010Q. And that's the latest version. Mine is a TL98Q. And, um, yeah, and that's... And it's... They, they just upgraded a, a couple little things on it. So it's, it's, they're the same machine and believe it or not, it only does one stitch and that is a straight stitch. And if someone would have told me that a machine that only does one stitch would quickly become my favorite sewing machine a, a couple years ago, I would have told you you were crazy. I will put the link if you are a seamstress and you are interested in the sewing machine light I will put the link down below um, so you can also um, find that there's a chickadee about just three feet from me the birds are mad that I'm kind of taking it we have a bird feeder just right behind my iPad where, where that I'm filming off of and um, yeah they're they're flying back and forth here so they're like you're in our personal space ma'am so um, the last thing that I have been working on is a quilt that I'm making for, or that I did make for my nephew. And I think the easiest way to do this, I think, is I will move the camera back. All right, let's do that. And I'll see if I can hold this up. All right. Can you see it? I'm not sure. So I'll kind of go up. It's the wind is sort of blowing it against me here. But it's a 
So it's a quilt I made for my nephew. He's expecting his first child in June. So he always wanted to be a um, marine biologist, and he isn't, but he always really liked um, the sea. So I still have a border to put around it, but you get the you get the general gist of it. So um, yeah, it was just a really fun fun pattern. Um, I'll put another I'll put a picture of it on Instagram once it's all quilted and the borders and everything are on. I'm gonna move this back here. Let's see how I did. Okay, so so I'll put a picture of it on Instagram once it's all quilted. I'm thinking of quilting it with like waves and I might actually try this one by myself on my Juki because that's the other thing that Juki sewing machines are known for is the free motion quilting that you can do with them. Um, a lot of, and that would be, I mean, baby quilts are a great quilt to start on. So I might just kind of go across and do like waves and um, quilt it that way and see how that goes. So um, I usually on baby quilts, I'll put either flannel or minky on the background. Minky is like that really super soft chenille kind of. Um, and it just, oh, baby, you know, babies just love soft things. So. And it's still very washable, so that's what's nice about Minky. And uh, my wool project that I'm doing with Teresa and uh, Jennifer of Jen Stitching Niche and Teresa Kitten Stitcher. Um, Teresa's all done with hers, and I have all mine cut out, but I have not sat down to actually just all I have to do. Everything is cut. Everything that needs to be cut is cut. I just have to sit down and sew it to the um, lay it out and sew it. To my my fabric and then stitch around it so I need to get that done I need to get going on that and I, I feel kind of lame because it was supposed to be the three of us but uh, we had lots going on so and I refuse to feel guilty for not keeping up because I'm my hands are busy the other thing I didn't that I didn't show that I've been working on is uh, my English paper piecing I've been plugging away on that so I try to do um, two stars and um, either, well I, I have a routine, I do like either three stars or two stars and two hexagons based on where I am. So in, in the hexagons there's like three diamonds that make up the hexagon, it makes these little cubes. So if there's any of those in the row I'll do those. So in my mind two hexes equal one star. So, so I try to do um, either three stars a week or two hexi cubes and two stars. So I, I should just, you know, let me just go grab that and all right, I just went and I grabbed my English paper piecing so you could see it. And to refresh your memory, this is what it will look like when it's done. So this is a quilt. It's by, um, the fabric is from Tula Pink and this came as a whole kit. And you stitch this in rows, so you can kind of see. You make these stars, and you stitch them into rows, and then you attach them all. So each week, and I'm almost to my goal, I try to do either three of these, or two of these, and two of these. Because two of these little squares, these little cubes, make up... It's the same amount of stitching as one of these is. So anyway, so I've got this week, I've got one more of these to do and one more of these to do. And you can see that they're right in here. I've got them all ready to go. They're all wrapped. They're all set here. So, so yeah, this will be my next, these will be the diamonds for my next star here. those and then these three go together these three diamonds go together to make a cube this always reminds me of the those of those of you that were children of the 80s remember the game cubert yeah my husband saw this and he's like you should make a cubert quilt i'm like yeah that'd be fun it kind of would be actually <laughs> to make this big cubert quilt and then applique the little cubert guy on there that would be kind of cute but Anyway, that's about all I have for you guys. Um, I will keep plugging away on my cross stitch and my quilting and I'll keep sharing. Um, those of you who do like knitted projects and stuff, I love seeing that. I don't knit. 
Um, I'm not very good at it at all, but man, I love seeing knitted projects. I'm so jealous. That's, I, that's just a talent I have never mastered. So that's really cool that you can all do that. I love seeing those knitted projects. So, um, it's fun to see things besides cross stitch sometimes, but I do appreciate that some people aren't into that. So I always try to put, um, my, my stuff at the, the end of my video. So, so that's about it. Um, wishing you smooth stitching and no ripping. See you next time, everybody. Bye.